Okay, welcome everybody. Uh, we are on streaming, uh, streaming Breaking Absolutes, and uh, today I have Rude Jolie here from the band Within Temptation. Um, we're going to talk to Rude about um, a whole number of things. It won't be only Within Temptation. Um, I spent a bunch of time getting to know uh, the man for all of the, the musical and creative things he's doing, and we want to talk about it all. Um, and then and we'll end with a really interesting project that he's um, he's been a part of, which is a forthcoming title releasing to the Steam platform called Of Burden Cage. Um, it's a symphonic uh, metal album that really drives a narrative experience. Um, so that's that's what we'll talk about. Um, just let me um, give a little bit of preamble on uh, this musician that we're about to talk to. So Rude, uh, he did attend... Uh, the conservatory uh, in his college, uh, majoring in jazz. So we know him for a lot of rock stylings, but clearly is a, is a diverse player. Um, he's been in bands that range from new metal to alternative. Uh, he's done much, um, amazing acoustic work um, covering Iron Maiden, and we'll talk about that. Um, of course, uh, Within Temptation itself has gone through a lot of permutations that are really interesting musically. Um, I could not spend enough time talking about various awards and nominations that uh, he's been a part of receiving in the band um, from his home country, uh, the Netherlands, throughout all of, of Europe and globally from, um, uh, you know, the, the Dutch version of the Grammys to Revolver's Golden Gods to Echo Awards to MTV European Music Awards. Um, um, really, it goes on and on. I'd, I'd rather spend time talking to him, but suffice to say that this is a celebrated musician who's been acknowledged for his work, and so we're really excited to talk to him today. Um, and so with that, let me bring him on. Welcome, sir. You're with us now. Hello. How are you? Good evening. I'm not too bad. How are you? Uh, we're doing well. Um, that's right. It's uh, We were just talking about this. You're nine hours ahead, so it's 10 p.m. Yeah, for I you. I said good evening, but yeah, it's 10 o'clock here. Yeah, 10 p.m. Yeah. Well, you know, we hopefully we've got people with us all across uh, the globe, certainly in the States. It's uh, all afternoon. Um, so uh, thank you for joining us. Um, thank you for having me. Yeah. So before we get going, let's just kind of take your temperature. I mean, the, the whole world's gone through a bunch of craziness the last year or so. Um, how are you faring in the midst of it all? I'm faring really well, I must say. I'm, I'm like this hermit by default, and now it's uh, socially accepted to, to be a hermit, you know, to not come out of, uh, of your house, to just stay indoors, to lock myself up in my studio, and no one finds it weird these days. So that's, uh, that's great. Yeah. Uh, now, on a more serious note, of course, you know, I was supposed to do a huge tour with, uh, with Interpretation and Evanescence, that has been postponed uh, for three times now. So um, uh, yeah, no gigs for me, um, less income, but you know, uh, whatever, you know, I'm, I'm still happy that I'm healthy and that my family is healthy and uh, you know, it gives me time to do other stuff. So uh, that's great, you know, I'm, I tend to be a glasses half full kind of guy as much as possible. That's good to hear. It's um, it's been interesting to kind of look across the the music community and um, see how people have responded to this. There's been so much um, creation during this time, um, you know, people writing and and performing through streams and whatnot. I, it's as much as it's an unfortunate circumstance. Um, I know that there's been a lot of um, new music created. So if there's a silver lining, that may be it. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, okay, so I want to go kind of on a musical journey uh, with you, and um, we'll spend some time as we kind of come to the present and, and what you're working on now. Uh, but if I'm if my uh, research is correct, your kind of first uh, serious band was a was called Brotherhood Foundation. Is that is it? Mm. Yeah, is that right? <laughs> yeah, that's correct. And, and, wow, a new a new metal band. If I if I'm correct. Absolutely. I joined them in 97 when, you know, bands like Limp Bizkit and Korn and, and Incubus and uh, Happy and, you know, all that kind of, uh, all those bands were really huge, uh, at least uh, in Europe. And um, so that was, a, that was a good time for the whole new metal crossover uh, musical genre. 
and that was my first yeah serious band that that uh, took me further than uh, just my hometown <laughs> I yeah. did my first uh, shows abroad and th those kind of things. You know, I was 20 or 21. That was a great experience. Yeah. Is it, um, was the new metal sound, was that, uh, were you drawn to that or um, for a specific reason or was it, was it kind of the prevailing thing and you just got swept along with that tide at the time? Yeah, that, that's more the case that, uh, that it was there. I, I got asked to join that band. That band had a, huge reputation not only in in my in the area where i'm from i'm from the south of the netherlands but in the whole of the netherlands had a, a really good uh, reputation uh they already did some really huge uh, festivals and gigs and support uh, shows and stuff like that so it was a huge honor for me to be asked by that band and you know i'm i'm a very um open-minded guy when it comes to you know musical genres i uh i i started playing guitar because of iron maiden but you know my scope is really wide and uh, l like you mentioned in the intro i studied at the conservatory and i majored in, in jazz music um so you know i i, I studied classical guitar so I, uh, I i i love all kinds of music as long as it's uh authentic basically that's yeah. that's maybe the 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 most important criterion that I have when I play music myself. Yeah. Oh, that's a good way. That's a good way of stating it. Um, and I, and I would listen to a bunch of this music. I even found some of the brotherhood foundation online and I was mm. listening to some things. I think that cool. what I found was live recordings, which was kind of cool to hear. Um, mm. So it, it, but you, you talked about the, it took you abroad uh, and the story, I think, goes that that you actually played a festival where Within Temptation was. Is that how you kind of came in contact with that group? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if you are familiar with the Dynamo Festival that we had in the Netherlands and uh, legendary festival. Well, at least over here. And the logo for that festival is the is a handprint. And we played at a festival in the Czech Republic, which was also called the Dynamo Festival, same logo, but they had a footprint as a, oh, wow. <laughs> as, as a symbol. So they were uh, inspired by that. And that's uh, exactly the case. There were eight, uh, eight Dutch bands that, um, that played at that festival. And, and two of those bands were Broadway Foundation that I was in at that time. And that's where I met uh, the guys and girl of Within Temptation. So it was there, uh, I mean, you must have made enough of an impression that later you got the invitation. Was it, was it that they kind of saw you play? Did you have some really great conversations kind of backstage? Yeah, it was more the conversation thing. I remember that I had just broken up with, with my, well, then girlfriend. She had broken up with me, so I was heartbroken. And my the bandmates of Broadway Foundation, they were at that time more interested in the the absinthe you know the green poisonous liquor yeah. <laughs> 98 percent alcohol i don't know how much but it's it's very strong and uh, the czech women and i was completely you know sad and uh, and then i found some comfort in uh, conversations with uh, the within temptation guys so i think it was more that than my playing <laughs> that's really that's actually a really cool story because um i know that both things matter but um, usually it goes that the, the initial connection is, is um, you know, uh, music in, in nature, right? Someone wants you to join, they're a great player, you have a good feel. Um, it's a very humanizing story. I love that. Um, mm -hmm. um, and then you, okay, so then you had, you had the, the meet, but that wasn't when Destiny struck yet. Um, uh, and so you went on later to... Um, to a band called, and I hope I pronounce this right, Valslicht. Did I get it right? Yeah, Valslicht. Okay. How it's a Dutch awesome? band. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you, yeah. you guys you guys made very, now this was an alternative rock band. So this was a, mm -hmm. a, a change from the new metal sound. So this is you again kind of doing something, um, sort of evolving, um, or at least trying something new. And you guys did this interesting thing. I think you were the first to do it in that all of your lyrics were in Dutch. Is that yeah that's correct how did you uh we were we were called uh the dutch nirvana oh wow for some reason 
we didn't sound anything like Nirvana, but to people who are not familiar with heavy music in general, you know, it it sounded maybe a little bit grungy. Um, but yeah, that, that's exactly uh, what it was. It was the, the lyrics were in Dutch, and we also did some great gigs and some cool festivals. But it never took us further than the Dutch borders, of course. Mm. And um, I was fine with that, but. Um, in that time, I also got asked to join uh, Within Temptation, but I just joined False Licht, so I declined. And then a couple of months later, they asked me again. But at that time, we had heard that the drummer of uh, False Licht was uh, diagnosed with lung cancer. Mm. So the band and his family were the two things that he would be, you know, fighting for. And so it didn't feel great for me to leave. Uh, and I must say that uh, Within Temptation was not aware of that situation, so it wasn't like, oh, uh, that guy has got cancer, so let's snatch him. Right. That wasn't the case. Uh, but I agreed to, uh, you know, to, to help them out, to substitute uh, as long as they, uh, as they would find a, a permanent uh, guitarist. And we went to Mexico for a gig, and we stayed a week in Acapulco. And that gig in Mexico, Mexico City, we had a signing session in a record store and there were hundreds of people and that gig was amazing. And that's when I thought, hmm, I'm in a band that sings in Dutch. I will never, you know, travel further than Antwerp in Belgium or whatever. So that's when I was thinking like, hmm, maybe I made a mistake by declining twice. Yeah. But yeah, fortunately for me, uh, it didn't work out with the new guy, so uh, I got a third and final phone call a couple of weeks or months later, and uh, because they uh, they kind of knew that. Can you hear my cat? Is my cat being annoying? I can hear him, but he's not annoying me. <laughs> no, okay, then I'm gonna leave. He's he fine. wants to go outside. <laughs> uh, anyway, so um, yeah, so I got the, the third and final phone call to ask if I wanted to join and uh, yeah, so I did. And that was, when was it? December 2001, something like that? Yeah. So that, almost 20 years ago. Yeah, that's what I saw, it was 2001. Mm -hmm. I think it says something, um, they must have been imp fairly impressed with you to, to, to ask you three times. Um, you know, so I, yeah. and I, th and I think- I don't, I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I think that, that um, I think that what, everything that's come after that is proof that they made a very good choice. Um, and I will talk a bunch about Within Temptation in a minute, but th there's some other things I'd love to, to chat with you about. Th there's another, mm -hmm. there's another um, sort of band collaboration that you're in, which is called Maiden United. Mm -hmm. um, and there, I, I found there's two releases, I believe, two like sort of formal um, album releases. But this is all... Um, acoustic arrangements of, of Iron Maiden, correct? Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, I'm not involved in that uh, project anymore. Okay. Uh, but I did it for, uh, yeah, for three albums, uh, six or seven years or eight years, I don't know. I did it with a friend of mine, a buddy of mine. Um, you know, I'm a huge Iron Maiden fan and he's an even bigger Iron Maiden fan and um, he was asked to do something special for the Dutch Iron Maiden fan club day. Oh. And he had the idea to do uh, some songs acoustically, some rearrangements. And, um, and that was really great because, you know, Iron Maiden fans can be pretty serious about and very like, ah, this is, this is our music. Yeah. So it was pre pretty, yeah, I wouldn't say scary, but it was uh, interesting because yeah. it could go either way, you know, either they would hate it or they would love it. And as it turned out, they loved it, the people who were there. So we decided to uh, make it into a more uh, serious thing and uh, all for fun, to, but serious in the way that we would take, you know, to try our best and, you know, and, and we decided to uh, to rearrange the whole Peace of Mind album um, and um, we would release an album and do maybe 10 gigs in a pub somewhere and that would be it. 
but uh, it turned out that we uh, ended up at the, the download festival in the UK and we did the wow. Wacken open air festival oh, in wow. Germany and we did some other big festivals and uh, and one of my last gigs was at the Royal uh, Theatre Carré in Amsterdam it's wow. like 1200 people and uh, for me that was a nice kind of thing like okay this is cool I've had fun and it was great and uh, and my buddy Joey he's uh, still continuing with it and he uh, he takes it in a little bit of a different direction nowadays but uh, I had a blast and it uh, it's really fun especially fun to notice when people are listening to a rearrangement for the first time and that they only recognize the song during the chorus for instance because we always wanted to really you know undress the original song and put new clothes on in a completely different way and um i really had a lot of fun to uh to do that yeah i listened to i wasn't able to, to listen to all of it but i listened to some of it and um I, I think maiden fans will love it i think i think the music is appealing to non-maiden fans mm -hmm. like in, in, absolutely in particular because it might be more approachable because of the acoustic nature for people mm -hmm. who mm -hmm. maybe don't listen to metal so much um, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So that, I mean, you know, that's a really great, um, you know, part of your music history, especially because it sounds like Maiden was a big part of the inspiration for you coming on this journey mm -hmm. anyway. Um, mm -hmm. So that's pretty cool. Um, yeah. Okay. So let's talk now a little bit about your solo work. Um, you've done a couple of albums um, and the name of this project is For All We Know. That's correct. The, the thing I, I saw, which I'd love to have you just share more about if you can, is the, I guess, thematic underpinning. Oh, there's, the, there's your cat. <laughs> that was one of my cats. He almost hung up the phone or the, the, the whatever. Yeah, anyways. He wants to be part Thanks. of the show. Um, yeah. <laughs> so the, the, I was saying, I, it, it seems like from what I'm able to gather is that there's a little bit of a thematic underpinning, at least for starting this, which has to do with um, searching for answers. Um, I was hoping maybe you yeah. could tell us a little bit more how you kind of came to that, at least as an idea. Well, the whole project came about with the idea of, you know, I've, I've been a, a, a sidekick for most of my life in bands, maybe not a literal sidekick, but at least, you know, a, a session player or, or a band person. And I've recorded uh, lots of albums and some of which were extremely successful of, and I'm proud of each and every one of them. But I never had an album that was really mine uh, in the sense that it was my music and my ideas and my, you know, my, my whole creative process um and i just wanted to have at least one of those albums at the moment that i would be on my death bed you know when i'm 85 or whenever that will be no one knows but um and that was my main goal and my secondary goal was that it you know would would uh, uh that i would recoup all the all the money that i put in because i financed it myself yeah and i uh I reached both uh, goals with that first album, which is uh, 10 years old already. Um, and yeah, that, that was basically it. And and the music is a bit more proc, proc metal, proc rock uh, like, because that's, that is maybe my main, my biggest love musical style, uh, musically wise, uh, musically. So think of bands like uh, Porcupine Tree or Pain of oh, Salvation yeah. or, uh, you know, that, that, that kind of stuff. Yeah, um, you're talking to the right guy. That's uh, progressive oh, yeah. rock and progressive metal. I mean, the, I was awesome. able to launch my channel with a bunch of the members from Dream Theater who are favorites. Of ah, I, oh, I heard. Yeah, that's great. So that's the, cool. the, uh, yeah, so we're, we're brothers under the skin musically. Mm. I love that stuff. Great. Porcupine yeah. Tree, Pain of Salvation, great bands. Ah, awesome. Yeah. So that was it. And, and, and I, um, I never wanted to make it into a new product in the sense that I wanted to tour and that, uh, you know, that that's, I don't have time for that because with intentation can be extremely busy at times. Sure. Um, but, uh, in 2018, I, uh, I released another album 
just because it's fun. And uh, and now I'm working on a third album. I don't know when that will come out. I don't have any any deadlines because the the, the cool thing uh, about uh, not making any money with your own music is that it doesn't pay my bills, so that it doesn't need a deadline. So yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's a, that's a good thing, I think. Well, I wanted to um, I, again. I I spent some time listening to to some of these two records. And um, I think that they're so innovative. The, there's a there's real musical movement inside them from um, from um, section to section. Uh, I mean, progressive is the the exact right word because it really kind of takes you on this emotional journey. So many of these songs, and some parts are really heavy, some parts are really really ambient. Um, mm. Yeah, I hope it. Fi- I, I'm hoping this can maybe be a little part of helping it find a broader audience because the music I think is so rich. Um, I, I'm a big fan. And I was going to ask you if there's going to be another album. And so it sounds like there will when time permits. So that's cool. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for your kind words. Thank you. Yeah, it's good stuff. Um, we'll, we'll include a link. Um, is mm. that, uh, let's just say it now. Is the best place to send them your personal website if they want to kind of branch out into your music and all the other things you're doing? Um, my, no. Because my my website doesn't have anything. Maybe yeah, that's a very good question. I feel like such an amateur now. Well, if they want to f- find out more about For All We Know, just send them to forallweknow.net. Okay, that might be the best uh, the best way. Okay, it's on Spotify as well. It's on Bandcamp. It's uh, yeah. Okay, that's good. Well, you need to get your website updated. You're, you got a very I know. rich musical history. We need a, a place to get to it all. <laughs> I'm so lazy <laughs> in that sense. <laughs> um, okay, so um, I've got one kind of really strange, random question, and that was as I was reading uh, about your gear list, there was there mm-hmm. was made mention that, 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 that there's a man as Regis eight string that that you have in your arsenal. Do you use an eight string on particular tracks that uh, I have to go here now? <laughs> Uh, we have been starting to use eight strings on the latest Within Temptation album, nice. on the Resist album. We did quite some eight string stuff. Excuse me. And I had some eight string things on the Take Me Home album by For All We Know, but I don't remember which songs they were. Uh, but uh, it's 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 most obvious in the. Uh, the Within Temptation song, uh, The Reckoning, for instance, or uh, that that was a single, or Racial Banner, or uh, yeah, those those songs. I I hate playing it. You do? How come? I I, I hate it. It's 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 so white, you know. It's yeah. it's. Ugh. No, I don't like it. <laughs> so do- <laughs> I'm I've been I've been playing seven string guitars for twenty years, and I still prefer six string guitars. Oh, really? Maybe I'm old fashioned. I don't know, but oh, it's whatever you like. Is is um is the reason you use the eight strings so that you could you didn't have to tune down to get certain notes? Uh yeah yeah, and it's very low, and the whole sound is different because I feel that it's not only a lower note, but the whole yeah, the whole characteristic of the guitar seems to sound completely different. Okay, for some reason. Yeah. I'm just a, I'm just a little bit of a nerd on that stuff. That's the only reason I ask mm. about it. Um, okay, so with that as a as a segue point, um, since you that's where you've spent some time using the eight string, uh, is with within temptation. Let's talk about within temptation. Um, mm-hmm. You joined, I believe, just just around. I, I, and was it the 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 um, tour that. The, the Mother Earth tour that had the, the big Ice Queen signal, uh, single, is that when you kind of came into the band? Yeah, the story is a little bit uh, different because okay. when I joined, we were supposed to work on the follow-up album of, of Mother Earth. Mother Earth was out uh, and we were supposed to work on a follow-up album. But that Ice Queen song all of a sudden got picked up by the radio over here in the Netherlands. And it became a really big hit. It, it was on the second position uh, for weeks. And all of a sudden, we did all kinds of mainstream TV shows and radio shows and uh, whatnot. And we also 
broke a little bit in Germany. And that's when we were invited uh, by Paradise Lost to, uh, to go on a support tour with them. But that was a year later. So that took quite a while before. Uh, yeah, so it took a long time uh, before we could work on a follow-up album. Yeah. So that whole process of, uh, of, uh, of touring and stuff that uh, took quite a while. Okay. So you're, you, you were, you thought you were joining to go in and write the next record, but the success yeah. of the, the single kind of necessitated a whole bunch of live, live touring. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, okay. So, th so the thing that I kind of feel like I, and I don't think I'm the only one that noticed this is you guys have done a really good job in, in the, in the band of evolving. I wanted to know is like I'm sorry the, the the sound broke the sound broke up so oh. I couldn't hear what you were saying. Well, what I was saying is it, it's it feels to me like within Temptation that you guys have this really really thoughtful um, evolution from record to record. You do very different things, sounds, um, use with narrative, and I want to talk about some of those records. But <clears> my <throat> my framing question is is that is that deliberate? Like, do you come in thinking, well, we're gonna do we're gonna shake it up or is it really just an organic change based on where you guys are as players? Hmm. That's a very good uh, uh, question. Can you give me two minutes, please? Sure. Or one minute or 30 seconds? Yeah, Is you, that possible? Yes, you bet. So I'm, I'm so sorry, but I'll be right back. Okay. I'll be right back. What? Okay. So while, um, while Root steps away, let me just kind of frame it this way a little bit more deeply for folks here who are on the stream. Um, and these, you know, many of you are probably within Temptation fans, and this is not news to you. But as I was kind of going back, looking at this preparation for the conversation, it, it became kind of, it kind of stared back at me pretty obviously that from early stylings as a doom um, gothic band to a symphonic metal band um, to a symphonic rock band, which is uh, often what the band itself will self describe it as. Um, two albums where they are deliberately pulling in an 80s um, or, or pop sound um, to a record that gets that was a transmedia effort. In my time at Xbox, we actually started to build a transmedia platform to do storytelling and sort of artistic creation across multiple platforms. And within Temptation to, took this approach on a record. Um, they, they did a record where, and, and we'll get to these when, when Rude gets back, but where they, they brought in a, a whole bunch of different um, uh, collaborators, Exhibit and uh, Tara and um, uh, Howard Jones uh, from Killswitch. And um, so this is what I wanted to, to talk to him about. We're, we're back. I was just telling everybody. Yeah, I'm, I'm so sorry. My cat, I, I heard my cat get completely sick. Oh, no. So that's why. Yeah, yeah, he's fine. Okay. He just wants attention. <laughs> But I, I had to I had to take a look if he's not dying. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm so I'm so sorry. Don't apologize. It's totally fine. I, it gave me a chance to tell everybody, just give them a deeper sense of the question I'm asking because, and I want to talk about these records. But there's such a unique character to to your album album over album with the band, and I'm it's really curious to me whether you come in like deliberately thinking we're going to do this. Or if you come in and it's just a creative, uh, organic creative shift. Mm, yeah, yeah, good question. Mm, to be really honest, I don't know exactly okay. because I'm not, Fair. I'm not, I'm not involved in the whole uh, writing process. Okay. Um, so I don't know what's going on in their in their heads. Um, I. What I do know is that we always try to look for something new, um, not only in the writing thing, but also in the recording process, in the, you know, the sounds. Apparently, you are a gear nerd as well. <laughs> uh, so, you know, we, we all like to to experiment. And, um, and I'm really happy that we do, because I would really hate it if we would still be um you know creating the same kind of album as we would 20 years ago yeah yeah and um 
like like you know there are a lot of, there are a lot of bands who who do who have a formula and who stick to that formula and there's not absolutely nothing wrong with that sure but i'm happy that we don't yeah i mean it um i i was and I, let's talk about a few of the records where there was uh well actually let's talk about the songwriting real quick so mm -hmm. it is when you guys get together to record a record are you uh, is a lot of the music written and they 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 just need you to to lay it down with your particular interpretation or are you required to like style it in a different way uh both okay you know i think that in metal um lots of metal songs are riff based yeah. you know that that's that's the foundation of a song and you know a riff is a riff that's you know you can't change that much about it because then the whole riff changes then the whole song changes basically yeah. um but it's absolutely the case that that sometimes there's just one uh, long guitar chord in the demo and that we need to come up with something ourselves yeah and that is that is really great that's uh so there's a lot of freedom for uh for me and stefan our other guitar player um you know um some clean guitar picking there some acoustic stuff some lead parts uh guitar solos all that uh, all that stuff and that uh, that's really great and um the last album resist we recorded at the Wisselort studio in uh, the netherlands that's where my maybe my all-time favorite album was recorded uh, somewhere in time by iron maiden yeah. um so that was great to be there uh, yeah that's I history remembered it. sorry it's a little part of history yeah absolutely yeah, and the engineer who engineered that album ronald prent uh he he has his studio now over there so uh every time when i saw him in the hallways i was like hey ronald share another story with me man and he would share another story that uh about uh about our main band that they recorded that album in 86 i think yeah so uh yeah that was fun but uh we spent like 10 days in that studio and for just the guitars and oh, wow. it was uh just trying out different stuff and that's really great and now the last because we have been recording some new songs i have been uh, recording them in my in my own studio again so i record my parts and stefan records his part he lives in stockholm sweden and uh, you know we send it by uh, by internet and and i always try to come up with all kinds of different guitar parts and you know 99 times out of a hundred they don't end up on the record but sometimes yeah an idea does <laughs> and, and that's great yeah nah it's it's not that bad but um you know if 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 i just present them with all kinds of different ideas they can the producer can pick what is what works because since the process is pretty simultaneously yeah you you don't know what what is going on what what the orchestral parts are doing or what the the you know the electronic parts are doing yeah so uh to so get them more options that usually works yeah no that makes a lot of sense to me and then kind of piece it together and then i assume that when yeah. when you guys get ready to tour you you get together and kind of just rehearse and get ready to, for the road yeah yeah um let's talk for a minute about the unforgiving um mm -hmm. the and this, I think this is a good precursor to the conversation around the game, um, which is how that we got connected. Uh, but there's part of this was a real narrative experience. It was this a tra what they call a transmedia storytelling experience. So there's the record with the music, but there were films, there were comic books. Tell us what you can about like how you arrived at the idea to do something so ambitious with a, that is story driven. <laughs> well we we just wanted to try something new and we all love our music is very visual you know it could work as a soundtrack yeah, and sure. we all we we are all huge movie fans and um also the fantasy style we we all like that and i'm i'm a huge star wars fan and you know the whole epicness and the, the visual stuff and that works really well with our music and so we wanted to uh 
yeah, to do something yeah, ambitious, maybe that's a very good uh, term for that. And we uh, met Romano uh, Molenaar, he, uh, he's a comic book artist, he, uh, he did Batman uh, for DC and he does uh, Storm, that's a, that's a Dutch uh, comic and he's a great artist. And he was in touch with Steve, oh, his last name, oh no. Oh no. Well, he wrote the story. O'Connell? Yes. Yeah. Yes, that's him. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so we decided to uh, release a six part comic book with it uh, as well. And, um, and, and three short movies that uh, were, that came out with the video with the music video and that we also use live on a, on our big led screen during our concerts just to give it more of a yeah more of a visual experience as well more like a story that you get really sucked into the whole the whole uh yeah music video story visual all kinds of things that uh, the multimedia yeah uh, thing yeah, I watched the I watched the short films. They're really, really good. Um, mm. And what's really a, an interesting experience is to watch the short films with professional. They're professionally shot, the black and white, um, and then to watch the actual music videos and and how some of the same imagery is used in both, but the very different but related feelings you get. I like, I think it was really a genius thing you guys did with that. Um, uh, mm. Very well done. I was, it was, um, Thank you. I had, uh, I, I had missed a bunch of it. So getting, knowing I was going to get to talk to you, I spent a bunch of time going back to it and I'm glad I did. People should definitely go check out, um, those films. And I think they're a good entry point into the rest of the narrative that, um, they built for this record. Really. It's really fun. Um, okay. So let's talk a little bit about Hydra. This was a place where you, I mean, one of the defining characteristics of it is there was so much collaboration. Um, you know, when I was um, running down, um, you've got, um, you know, Howard Jones, uh, you've got Tar, you've got Exhibit. What, I mean, what prompted such a diverse set of collaborators on a record? Was it, yeah, I just, I mean, really interested. It was really the music. It was not um, that we were sitting down and thinking like, ah, we should have some collaborations because that's cool and that's hip. And no, absolutely not. But for some reason, um, like the whole world, world is watching with David Perner uh, from uh, Soul Asylum. He has such a nice characteristic voice. And 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 I think it was Sharon or, or Robert who, who really heard his voice with, with, uh, with that song. Um, you know, exhibit. Uh, it's we needed a, a, a rap for and we run the song and we run, and um, uh, we we thought that exhibit was an, a great artist, but also from his TV shows, you know, very cool pers person and yeah. his personality and Real stuff. Good presence. And uh, yeah, and and Taria, that was of course. Um, you know, with Intemptation and Nightwish, of course, she wasn't in Nightwish anymore uh, then, but um, no one had expected that we would ever do a collaboration. So for a lot of people, that was a huge uh, surprise. And uh, yeah, I, I met I met all those artists, except for Howard Jones, but I met them all and they're all super nice, really cool, nice people, very easy to work with. So that was... Yeah. Uh, for me, that was also a fun experience. Well, I, I I love that you guys, the approach was not, hey, let's do some collaborations because that's cool. It was that mm, you wrote no. music that sort of required something. And then you, ah. you know, you looked at, at the artist that could help you bring to life that vision. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah it, and of course, you know, these days with internet, it's it's so easy. Right. So maybe, maybe that's also one of the reasons why we started doing it as opposed to 20 years ago because that might have been a bit more complicated and more expensive at least <laughs> yeah flying people True. around the world Absolutely. to record yeah mm -hmm. um the last the last within temptation uh, record I, I want to talk about uh, of course is resist and this record's got a, its own 
sort of defining quality. There's, there's, um, some people have called it industrial. Some people have said there's a bit of an EDM flavor, but it's, it's more danceable in some regards than some of the, the prior records. Uh, was, mm-hmm. the, was this, um, I mean, I guess it's maybe the same question as before, but this is a, um, I mean, it, it's still within temptation. It's all filtered through you guys as artists. So I don't think anything's like, Oh, that sounds like that doesn't sound like them, but it, it is like a, a new sonic like signature for the group. Um, do you find that people are respond to this and more of a, um, uh, with more of a dance vibe? Maybe we, and to be really honest, I don't hear that myself. Okay. But that's maybe because I'm, I'm too close up to it, you know, that, that I don't have that overview anymore of, of why oh, that album is more that vibe. And because, because also with, with live shows, we mix all these songs around. So to me, it's one huge within temptations too, yeah. but I can imagine, you know, if you take the album separately that you get a different vibe from it um yeah you know it was also from the comments that i read i usually don't read comments uh, from people because i don't care but um some people hated it and some people loved it yeah but i think you know i i if if you if you make art that everyone loves then you're doing something wrong i think i agree and to to be really honest, you know, if you take our very, very first album that I wasn't even uh, involved in, uh, Enter, our very, the very first album from 97, I think, yeah. that is so completely different from what we are doing now. So, it, you know, it's, 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 it's normal that people don't like it anymore, the, the well, things that we are doing nowadays. And vice versa, you know, people who love our new stuff, they they prob- they might not like the very uh, first album. Yeah, it's um, it, I I think it's a really good thing. Um, you know, that first record of yours is sometimes talked about as a as a doom metal or a goth metal mm-hmm. um, record, but the fact that you guys um just remain true to you know what you want to be able to write and create, I think. It tells something, you know, one of my other favorite bands is a band uh, called Queensryche. And oh, nice. Yeah. They, they, I mean, they, they refuse to be sort of boxed into a, into a sonic sound too. And there were very polarizing records in their catalog because, you know, people wanted to hear the next Operation Mindcrime, but that's not mm-hmm. what they, they didn't want to write that record again. So the fact that Within Temptation is, is, you know, doing that, uh, I think it's all the more power to you. Um, I, mm. It excites me it, that I I can't predict what you'll do next. Um, so that's mm. that's really cool. Um, all of which brings us to um, of bird and cage, um, which is a well. Let me let me ask you. Why don't you tell us a little bit about it, and then I've got some questions for you. Sure. Of bird and cage. Well, I got. Uh, an email from Arnold, he's the composer, Arnold Nasis, and I think that was like 25 years ago. <laughs> no, not really, but it feels like that. It were, I think it was five years ago, five or six years ago. He was telling me that he was composing music for a, a video game, and if I wanted to join, and you know, these, these musicians are gonna join, and blah, blah, and I said, yeah, sure, great, you know, why not? Let's let's see what it uh, what it will uh, look like, what it will sound like, um, and then I didn't hear anything for the next three years, and then all of it, I I had completely forgotten about it, and then all of a sudden I got another email by him. Hey, it's finally gonna happen. Are you still you know Are you still keen on doing it? And um, yeah, and then and that's when I started working on that uh, on that album. He wrote the music. And uh, he recorded demos, and uh, yeah, over the course of I think a couple of months, I uh, I recorded uh, that album in my own studio. And uh, two years ago, we had this uh, presentation in Malmo, in Sweden, and uh, we played like seven or eight songs live. Oh wow! So it was really great, really fun, with uh, pretty much all of the musicians except for Casey, Casey Grillo from Queensryche, he couldn't make it. Uh, but uh, Cobra Page was there, Ron Bumblefoot was there, Ron Bumblefoot uh, Thal, 
Uh, Rob van der Loo from Epica was there. Uh, yeah, and a bunch of Israeli guys because it's an Israeli uh, 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 game. And it was a blast. That was really great. And I'm really excited that it's finally going to be released this month, the 20th of, uh, of May on PC. So, uh, yeah, I'm really excited. I've seen some stuff two years ago when we were doing that uh, the presentation. And, um, yeah, I can't wait to play it. It's yeah. Really cool. I was going to ask if you'd had a, if they'd given you like a beta code or something to take a, a sneak peek, but it sounds like not yet. No, and I only have console. I only have PS4. Oh, okay. I don't have a PC. I am a Mac user, so I uh, I can't even play it. So, oh, are bad. there are there plans to bring the game to console? Do you know? Uh, there are plans. Yeah, yeah, but when that's uh, I that's not that's not uh, well. At least I don't know, uh, and I don't think that they know either. But there are plans. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I was looking. It looks like it's releasing through Steam. Um, yeah, it can, it can be wishlisted already, by the way. Okay. If people, uh, yeah. And there are some trailers out. The um, Just a little bit about it, and you can keep me honest here, but it, it seems like it's kind of a retelling of the Beauty and the Beast story. Hmm, yeah, yeah. Um, there's a, there's a, a young woman who's drug addicted, and she's basically kind of captive to another character. Um, his his name is Bress. Her name is uh, uh, Gida, Gidea. I hope I'm pronouncing Gidea, that. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it, it's, um, and, and as I understand it, what's really unique about the game, um, and I encountered this first when I was at, at Xbox. There's a, a sort of legend, legendary um, game creator by the name of Peter Moore, and he created a franchise called Fable, wherein every choice you made in the game had consequences and affected the outcome. And this game, from what I read, does something kind of similar. The choices you make um, have a bearing, and there's different endings. Is, um, have you heard mm -hmm. that same thing? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So it it is it is very possible to play that game a couple of times and have completely different outcomes. And the the um, the sense I got, I, there's some trailers that I've watched uh, and uh, of gameplay, and the sense I got of the game is that. Um, the, the music, and, and I guess this is what you'd expect, but it's different from other attempts we've seen before to meld kind of metal and gameplay in that the music is kind of composed to um, really partner together with the narrative, you know, to really describe the emotional state of the characters, um, mm. which is, you know, I mean, it's a, and, and I guess if you, you it, one thing I read talked about, it might, if you kind of go through this experience, it's like, a two hour symphonic metal concert that you're playing a, a, a game to. Yeah. You could see it like that. Yeah. Or a two hour music video with, uh, yeah, a whole, it's not a medley, but yeah, like, yeah, maybe a concert. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. It's a it, good one. The, um, the, there's some really, really nice stylings in this. And when I, 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 I when I visited, um, and I'm blanking the composer's name now, remind me, of 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 Burning Cage, yeah, Arnold Arnold, Arnold Naces. I I visited his website and he's he's um he's done other um game comp composing, so this isn't like a first foray for him. Um, mm -hmm. and he's actually very good. He's got an entire panel where he he sort of demonstrates how you can evoke different um um feelings with music, anger, um, despair joy it's like really it's wonderful that he thinks in that way and i think it shows through uh in the experience that that they've built for this game um so i wanted to ask you when 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 you were recording were you given some latitude in how to like play these parts kind of like in with within temptation or were they really pretty scripted for you they were extremely scripted okay I uh, I told him that he suffers from a very severe case of demoitis. I don't know if you know what I mean by that. I do. <laughs> I don't know if the viewers you know should, what I mean you by should that. You should explain it for everybody. Yeah, well, uh, demoitis, that means that, you know, if you if you make a demo, musical demo, and you, you put your ideas on that demo, that you get used, that you get so used to what you've been hearing for days, weeks, months on end, that when the actual recording 
has been done, which is slightly different or completely different, that you just cannot, you know, compute that that change that you still want to hear the original version. And that's that's yeah, demoitis. And sometimes that's good. On the other hand, sometimes it's not so good. And I'm not saying that because it turned out amazing, the music. So and Arnold knows exactly what he wants because that's you could also see it like that that he really knows what he wants. But for me, it was sometimes like, "Hey, dude, what I recorded also sounds good and it sounds more like me." And and he was like, "Yeah, I really want that one note. No, I want it to be like how I intended it," which is fine. You know, he's sure. a composer, so I I totally respect that. And I know that he'll be watching this. Maybe he's watching it now, or maybe. He will be watching it some other time, but he knows he knows that I uh, accused him of uh, demoitis. <laughs> uh, I was actually talking to sorry, I was actually talking to Casey about that as well. Yeah, I ran into him at the Wacken uh, Wacken Open Air Festival in Germany, and we were talking a little bit about this game, and uh, he experienced the same thing. But now it's as if I'm knocking. Uh, uh, Arnold, which I'm absolutely not because I have uh, really uh, great respect for him. No, I don't feel that way. I, I think it, it, every composer, producer has a style. Um, and, mm. you know, you what we've seen just in this conversation with you is that there's you have pro products, uh, excuse me, projects, musical stylings that are a, a full expression of you and then and everything in between where you're mm. at, you're you're adding layers to things that that other people have conceived and sometimes asking to play a note exactly the way they want you know musicians yeah. are called upon to do all of these things um depending mm. on the project so um it makes sense. it makes perfect sense to me um so i, I want to ask is there any chance that that you guys will get together again to play this this record you know this this group of musicians that would be really, really amazing. I know that they are thinking about doing a tour in Europe. Oh, wow. About, but, you know, then this pandemic thing happened and it wasn't set in stone anyways, but uh, there were, there are some serious plans of at least trying to do that. But when that will happen and, or if it will happen, I don't know yet, but, um, uh, I know that I would really like to empty out my schedule for this uh, for this project because that would be really great to uh, to do some concerts with this group of people. Yeah, I mean, there is it's such a star-studded lineup uh, of people who are in other like meaningful bands that tour. That I, I can imagine the logistics of getting you all together would be very difficult. Yeah. Um, but having said that there there's now that the game is done and there is so much video and visual information i can imagine what a cool concert that would be to be for they could put such a cool backdrop of led cinematics against this that it would be like going through this this you know this soundscape with it would be so cool i hope i hope you guys get the chance i would come mm, to that me too me too It'd be fun. yeah but like you said yeah we, all musicians are so busy and schedules don't align. So that's uh, nearly impossible, but you know, who knows? Who knows? Well, speaking of that, it, um, what, what do you know, if anything about when within temptation might get back out live? Is there any plans being made? We uh, had a full summer full of festivals. And what I know now is that until July 1st, nothing is going to happen. You know, the problem is that, that every country is waiting for their government to tell the festival if it can happen or not. Because if a festival takes its own initiative and, and cancels a festival, then, you know, they worst case scenario, they can get sued by the bands. But if it's due to, you know, governmental, um, how do you say that? If the government tells them that they can't do the festival, then it's a different story, of course. Yeah. Um, for me personally, I think that this whole year is gone already and every show or every little tour that we can do is a bonus. 
Um, but that big Evanescence Arena tour that uh, has been postponed to March and April of 2022. Okay. And that that is going to happen. You know, I was telling myself that if it's not going to happen again, if it's going to be postponed again, then we really have a huge problem. The whole world has a huge problem. Imagine if, you know, in a year from now, we're still in the same shit. Yeah. Then we really have a problem. Yeah. It, it, you know, not, uh, it's a really, really complicated issue because um, here, here in the States, you know, there's, there's been, we've tried to have relief for venues because venues are just suffering. Um, they're going under, mm. going out of businesses. Um, bands of course are struggling. It, it, only the top, like s huge percentage or very, very small percentage are weathering this very well. Um, I mean, and, and there've been some notable musicians who, because of the, the way that the industry is and the, the impact of this have walked away from their music. Mm, um, mm, and, mm. and, um, I don't want to recount those stories. I mean, they're, they're understandable. I mean, one of the things that's happened is that some of the, the, the venues and promoters are asking the, the bands to carry all the risk, you know, if something mm. happens. So then, you know, and, and typically the promoters or the, or in combination with the venues, they're they're taking some of the risk to bring the band in. There's a guarantee, um, and so you know things are so fragile. Bands can't do that because mm -hmm. the, you know the government has the control. So that's just to bring it back to your point: is is um, there's a lot of groups that need to tour to feed their families, um, mm -hmm. and it's it's a it's a it's a tough time. So we'll kind of watch mm -hmm. to see when hopefully you guys can get back out on the road. Um, Everybody's excited to see you again. Um, um, and I was going to ask, what, what um, has this changed the the planning or timing for the next Within Temptation record? I don't think so that much because the way we are approaching the new album now is that we are taking it song by song. Oh, we okay. release a song every every couple of months. So, oh wow! Um, yeah. Um, since, yeah, let's face it, no one buys CDs anymore. Yeah. And, you know, you can drop a new song anytime you want on Spotify. That's right. And I like it, actually, because then, you know, we get to, we, we just did a, I don't know if I'm allowed to say, but we did another photo shoot last week and we did a, another music video last week. And, you know, it's fun, you know, you still get together and um uh, for a new song by the way which will be released i don't know when but um i think it's fun because it keeps it going you know yeah um and eventually we will re release a full album and that will be probably around the time when we get to tour with uh, evanescence uh, in, in in march or april i think i don't know yeah well something to look forward to um just yeah. just one or two more questions uh rude one one mm -hmm. would be this um given everything we've talked about are there um sort of creative endeavors that you've not tackled yet that you know you want to whether it's musical or it could be something else is there you know when time and circumstance allows yeah since a couple of weeks i've been thinking of uh, maybe starting a patreon page because I, one of the ways that I have, uh, you know, made money during this pandemic is is by teaching. I have been teaching since '98, so I and I love to teach. I really love to teach. I really like it, and um, I'm a little bit of a music theory nerd. Oh, nice! And uh, the the school where I teach, that's the Metal Factory in Eindhoven, we uh, went international this year which means that we can uh, accept people from all around the world, you know, but that also meant that I had to translate my music theory method because I wrote one into English. And that made me think, hmm, maybe I can, you know, I don't know, do something with that. And I was thinking of maybe, uh, maybe starting a Patreon page for music theory based on heavy metal music. Yeah. Because, you know, there, there's a lot of uh, jazz theory and classical, mu uh, classical music theory 
which in the end is all the same. I know that, but I don't think that there's a, a music theory with heavy metal examples because that's that's the that's the biggest problem that most people have with music theory is that it's so so dusty, so abstract sometimes. And I think it's very important to have to have you know musical examples that you know if you if you explain something about a rhythm that you can li make people listen to a certain song that that use that utilizes that that certain rhythm yeah. or that scale or that chord progression or whatever so i'm thinking about that a little bit but i'm, I'm i first want to finish a, a third for all we know album before i get into that and i don't know if if, if people would be interested in that uh, i don't know seems like a lot of work <laughs> it, yeah i think it would be a lot of work but i think uh I, i've seen a few musicians who are using the patreon to pretty good effect um a friend of mine mm. who happens to be in dream theater um their keyboard player jordan rudess uh ah, yeah. has a has a patreon and it does he mm. it does really well for him um so you know and you have such a, a following and platform i think you know when time permits i think that that would be a lot of people would be interested to to be able to apply. The, what, do, is there a name for this a music theory approach that you have written? Has it got a title or? No, no, not really. Or maybe you come up with a snazzy title, and that can be your Patreon yeah. channel. Um, That's a good plan. But I think I think I think there's something there. Um, but you know, I would also really love the next um, solo record because um, because I'm a prog fan, and I think we need more of that too. <laughs> Cool, cool. Well, look, at. Um, I appreciate you spending an hour with us talking about all of your musical endeavors, talking about A Bird and Cage. We're really excited for that game. Um, wish you well. Um, I know it's late there. Hopefully you'll get, you'll get some sleep and your cat's okay. Yeah, I'm going to have another look in a minute. Are you sleeping on the couch now? Or he's dead? I don't know. No, he's, <laughs> he's asleep. <laughs> no, it's absolutely my pleasure. I, I really enjoyed talking to you, Peter. So thank you very much for having me. Thanks for being here. Take good care. All right. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.